Today I'd like to talk to you about the uh, relationship between analog and digital. And I think for a potter it's really significant because when we make a handmade cup there's all these iterations and variations. But I'll never forget when a student said, Chris, you know, you can just throw pots on an iPhone or cell phone. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. And they handed me their phone. Sure enough, there was this app and you could start throwing these pretty dynamic pots all over. But what I quickly noticed is you couldn't throw the pot off center. And that's sort of the most elemental aspect of, of uh, learning how to make a pot is to get it on center and then oftentimes people want to get it off center and so forth. So I became really intrigued with this relationship between analog and digital and I didn't even know what the two words meant and I started you know trying to look them up and research and analog basically is anything in nature it's like your blood flowing or sweat or uh, the sap and a maple tree flowing whereas digital is comprised of zeros and ones and it really is all the electronic uh, gadgetry we make for communication. A friend and colleague of mine, Cody Goodart, who's a photographer, really had some interesting insights, and particularly perhaps because he is a photographer, and uh, he's dealt with film and has a passion for, for what film does, but also uses digital cameras. He says something really interesting about a computer. He said, you know, Chris, the computer is really just this very sophisticated calculator. It's made up, you know, of zeros and ones, and it's programmed to do something. And it's somewhat limited by those programs. And not to diminish what computers can do, obviously they're amazing, but they're different than the analog in some way. And for me, I've always remembered a quote by Milan Kundera about chance in the hand. And he said that chance and chance alone has a message for us. Everything that is expected, repeated, or planned is moot. Only chance speaks, and we read its messages the way gypsies read the images of coffee grounds at the bottom of a cup. So I think there is something particularly revealing about chance and vulnerability in that sort of creative process. I guess there was a particular moment that was very powerful for me in terms of the, the computer where I was receiving a message and uh, it was a very sad message about a friend that had passed away and I was reading the eulogy and sort of uncontrollably uh, some tears fell off my cheek and fell on, onto the computer screen. and. I noticed that the computer screen was pixelating because of my tears. And it seemed magical in some way that there was this marriage, if you will, between these two worlds of feeling and uh, this amazing uh, machine or tool, the computer. And I think in many ways uh, it was uh, maybe a forecast to the future because I think in some ways our survival is going to be based on how we use this technology uh, to remind ourselves of what really matters in the world, and that's each other. I will insist on being closer than this. Okay, go for it. You do what you need to do, Ryan.